Hey there, Nick Dunitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over whether or not we should use the long form or word-based command line flags or the short abbreviated version. For example, if you wanted to get something like the version of curl, would you use dash dash version or would you use dash capital V? And right here, you know, we're messing around while using the curl command, but this applies to running any command line tool with any flag, not just getting the version. And let me just preface this video by saying I have some opinions on this one. And, you know, these are what I consider personal best practices. And really the answer is it's going to depend, right? So if I am on the terminal just running ad hoc commands, I'm basically always going to use whatever is in muscle memory. Sometimes it's going to be the long version. Sometimes it's going to be the short version. It really depends. For example, when I'm running grep on the command line, I'm almost always going to use dash capital O if I just want to return the matches here. I actually don't even know offhand what the long version of that is. So let me actually bring up... Uh, grips help menu here and we will take a look here at dash capital o which is over here only matching so you know i know that it only shows uh the parts that match but i actually didn't know the long form for this flag was only matching why because dash o is in um my own like brain's cache right it's in uh, muscle memory so i just instinctively type that one actually interestingly enough i just ran grep help here uh but i ran that with uh, the long form dash dash help why? Because I don't know, every single time I run a command line tool, I'm almost always just typing dash dash help instead of dash capital H. In this case, look, look at that, like the shorthand didn't even uh, work for either one. So, and, and I guess like my brain was trained to know that, like there are a lot of command line tools where H does something different than help. So I've just been known here to type the long one. Likewise, when it comes to something like getting the version, uh, I'm sure we've all experienced this one, right? So it's like with curl, yes, I know it's dash uh, capital V here to get the version, but V actually is uh, verbal mode that will give you more information about um, a certain uh, request here. So if I do example.com here, you get all sorts of different extra information here about, uh, you know, headers, etc. because that isn't version. And yeah, there's so many different inconsistencies between different command line tools where sometimes lowercase v is verbose mode, sometimes it's version, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it, the, to get the version is an actual separate command and not even a flag. Like these uh, are all reasons why I tend to usually use dash dash version when I can. And if that doesn't work, then I try it without the dashes, depending on the command line tool. So yes, uh, if I am running something on the command line, absolutely super dependent likely going to be using the shorthand version for most of them, but sometimes I use a long one once in a while. And uh, now let's talk about some other use cases, right? So you now we're stepping away from just running commands ad hoc on the terminal to potentially writing your own script and maybe open sourcing it, whether or not it's open source doesn't matter. Maybe you're working for a company and you write some scripts or whatever. I absolutely prefer using the long form of all the flags whenever possible here because, you know, I'm not going to be typing these things out every single time I run the script because the script is already having this stuff typed out, right? Like for me, this becomes a form of documentation like written into the script where now I don't need to second guess, like, is that supposed to be a, like dash W? Is that what write out means? Like, what does that mean? Now it's like written out, like absolutely know what it means. Likewise with the output one, I know. And this, and maybe there is like a, a side topic of this one too. Like so many people using curl, like we just know that dash O is output, but still I think writing it out here is totally worth it. And then this one is more interesting, like location one where I'm still, you know, following that suit of using the longhand version here, but this kind of doesn't really tell you what location actually does. Uh, so, you know, using dash capital L there, debatable because like the longhand doesn't really help that much, but yeah, I mean, but I, I guess long story short, my preference is if I'm writing a script, I'm gonna be using the long version because yeah, it's not really a, a big deal because I'm not typing that all the time. But when it comes to another context here, like writing documentation, then um, I do think it's totally worth it to use the longhand version in your docs, basically whenever possible. So for example, I, I made a video about this pretty recently about um, an ES build plugin. And in the installation instructions here, uh, we can either yarn install this package or npm install it. And I've chosen to use the long form here, you know, dash dash dev to install this as a dev dependency. Likewise with npm, slightly different flag, but same effect here. And there's been so many times where I've looked at documentation for uh, other, you know, JavaScript packages to install or something, and they use dash capital D here instead of dash dash dev. And I run all of my web applications in Docker very, very, very rarely, basically never, do I run something like a yarn add on a specific package. Usually these packages are just sitting there in a package JSON file that I've added manually, and then I just do a um, yarn install, but that's happening in a Docker file. It's not even something that I'm ever typing manually. So depending on what day it is, like literally, if I'm looking at your docs like six months in the future, I actually probably won't even know what the dash capital D uh, is here. Now. 
it's probably going to be infused in my brain that, you know, it's installing it as a dev dependency. But, you know, six months down the line, like maybe I second guess that. And I think like, does that mean like to delete the old versions before I add the new one? Because that's totally reasonable. And I've definitely seen other command line tools where if they use something like a, a capital letter for the shorthand one, that means like a destructive action. So like maybe it is deleting. Like, you know, these are things that uh, I think you need to think about when writing documentation because not everyone knows the tools as well as you do. I'm sure someone who is working with JavaScript and, you know, NPMing or Yarn installing things on a daily basis, they're totally going to know the shorthand version for that all the time. But uh, someone who might just pop in once in a while to install a package probably doesn't. And does it really hurt to add the long version here? I don't think so because really you're just going to copy paste that, right? So uh, it's not like you're causing much harm for someone who needs to do extra work on their end. Yes, you need to write a little bit more characters when writing the docs, but not a big deal at all. And um, it is gonna, it does get interesting though, because I thought a little bit about um, before making this video, like some other use cases potentially, and I am guilty of using shorthand here. So like, for example, in my docs here to install this L curl tool, L curl tool, which I did make a video about, by the way, if you wanna check that one out, uh, I'll drop a card up, but look at me. Guilty, guilty, Nick, caught me, caught me red-handed using the shorthand version here um, for the copy-paste installation instructions where I probably should be using the long version here. But then it like also, uh, it, it's so subtle, right? Because some of these things are like so super common. Like for the location one, does having dash dash location really help there? Because it almost doesn't help that much to know that, you know, this is going to redirect um, or file a redirects basically. And for the output one, like, do we all know that it means output? But then again, you're, you're depending on like user context, like going back to this example here, you know, sure, someone who's working with JavaScript all the time knows all about that, but maybe someone who doesn't work with curl all the time doesn't know that means output. And then also like with the ch mod here, um, plus X, I don't know, like I can't even, like I've been using the command line for a long time now. I've probably run ch mod a million times, maybe not a million, but heck of a lot. I can't even tell you what the longhand version of um, making this file executable would be. Like, let's find out. So ch mod, and again, I'm going to go with my trusty dash dash help because I don't trust using um, dash h. But x, like, it's not even in the help menu. Like, it looks like each mode is in the form of this. Maybe there actually isn't a long form for that one. Um, to be determined, I'll let you know in some editing. I'll, I'll overlay something if there is. But that's what we're dealing with, right? So sometimes there are subtle times where uh, you don't use a longhand version because it either doesn't exist or you take things for granted. I don't know. Should I go back and edit this to use a long version? Hmm. I don't know, debatable, maybe, maybe not. But I think in this case, it, it's not too bad because like right below that, it actually just says exactly what the command does. Like, you know, that's going to download the latest release. Whereas with this one, you know, there's no extra context saying like, by the way, this is going to install this as a dev dependency. And in my opinion, like I would consider that documentation very wasteful. And um, it's just unnecessary when we use a long flag because the long flag kind of tells it what it is. You know, I guess if you were brand, brand, brand new to the Node ecosystem, you might not know the difference between what a dev dependency is versus a regular one. But at that point, now we're starting to get into some pretty murky waters because it's like, if you need to explain the context of everything before you get to anything, then it's like, well, then what? Like every JavaScript package that I make needs like literally like a 4,000 word blog post to explain like, what is a package dependency? Like what is NPM? What is yarn? Like at some point you need to draw the line to where like anyone who is reading this readme file and in, in, in a position to even find this repo probably knows what yarn or NPM is and knows the difference between at least at a high level, what a dev dependency is versus a regular one. So. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a quick video. Well, I guess like eight minutes is, is still pretty fast, but that is basically my take on whether or not you should use the long form or the short version really depends. Just to recap very super quickly on the command line, just use what's in muscle memory. doesn't really matter. Could be the long, could be the short. Documentation, prefer the long. And then likewise, when you're writing scripts, also prefer the long. But uh, I guess there are maybe some exception, exceptions here and there. But with that said, Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions about any of this or let me know your preference below in the comments. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. I know you can't really see dislikes anymore due to how YouTube changed things, but the likes really do make a difference in the end. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.